Hey guys, welcome to another Orms TV video. Now myself and Dion are sitting here at Pinar and Sun Distillery and we are checking out a brand new Nikon Z30. Yeah, so this is Nikon's first attempt to really try and enter that content creator vlogging market. And we figured we'd come out here to this distillery, taste a bit of gin, vlog a little bit with the camera and tell you guys what it's all about. And we're first going to run through the specs of this model. The Nikon Z30 features a 20 megapixel DX sensor. It obviously has the Z mounts that will fit all the new Nikon Z lenses. You can shoot 11 frames per second, which is something we're seeing quite often now with mirrorless cameras, having like a really nice high speed. You do have some animal tracking modes in this and obviously human face and eye detection. This is in both stills and video mode. So talking about video, I'm going to run through some of the video specs. Yeah, so just quickly, so you're shooting 4K um, at a maximum of 30 frames per second. It also offers you a 25 and 24 frame rate within your, um, your 4K recording. And when you are shooting 4K 30, there is no additional crop on the sensor, which is quite nice in this bracket at the moment. In addition to that, you also have Full HD up to a maximum frame rate of 120. And what I was quite surprised to see is that it's not a baked in 120. So it is quite nice if you're trying to use that within just your normal workflow, very, very handy. Now this little camera unfortunately has no log profile for your video recording. So you are limited to what Nikon refers to as a flat profile. So that flat profile doesn't really give you any additional latitude, so there's no extra dynamic range available within that apart from the standard. But a little bit of a flatter profile does still open up basic editing abilities within that. So all in all, pretty decent. Now having some of the internal specs out of the way, something where the Nikon Z30 shines for me is definitely the body. And the controls and the feel of this camera is spot on. I think Nikon did a really good job with that. It doesn't feel like an entry level body. I mean, you've got two control dials. Mm -hmm. You have the obvious flippy screen because this camera is kind of aimed at the vlogging content creators. You've got the microphone input, which mm -hmm. is great. It uses the EN EL25 battery, which is the new entry level battery that you see on some of their models. Mm. Yeah, I mean, really, really, actually surprisingly good. Um, I was quite shocked. I was expecting something more along the lines of like the ZVE 10, but this yep. feels more solid. So for me, in the hand, nice grip. That's the first thing that I noticed about it. Really handy. Um, on, in terms of the inputs over here, you have your USB-C and HDMI ports as well. This can also be powered via USB-C, which is very nice, especially if you're doing any form of streaming, that kind of thing. Very handy to have that sort of power input. All the buttons feel good. Really the dials solid. feel solid. Yeah. yeah, like it really is a Nikon quality product. Yeah. You know, exactly what you would like. The other thing that I really enjoyed about this was the fact that it does keep stills and video settings separate. So as you switch between the two modes on the back here, your settings remain intact. Very handy. It is something that you see on most cameras these days, but it is still a nice to have and still some, a little bit surprising when we see it. It's just nice. It's one of those nice little things. Also something to mention is the new stereo mic they've added on the top, mm -hmm. something we haven't really seen on these entry level cameras. So if you're not using any external audio, you can be sure that you have some decent audio quality. Yeah, absolutely. In addition to your two stereo microphones, you also have a dedicated video record start stop button, which is very nice. And then something that I find quite useful and used it quite a bit today actually, is the tally lamp that's oh, included in yeah. here as well. Not the brightest lamp in the world. You know, if you're outside shooting in bright sunlight, you're probably gonna struggle to see it. But if you're shooting indoors like this, perfect. Now, as we said, there's a lot of positive things we love about this Nikon Z30. The touch and feel, the buttons, everything is great. Now, this is obviously aimed for a more video, social media kind of content creation crowd. 
And that being said, there's obviously no viewfinder on this, yeah. which is not the end of the world, because again, it's not really aimed at that hardcore purist photographer crowd. Mm. Now, something to add to this is that it does have these two custom buttons in the front, which we use quite often to change either white balance, ISO, focus modes. You can set that to anything you like, and that's a real bonus. Yeah, um, I 100% agree with you on that. It's not geared towards dedicated photographers, but at the same time, every time I test one of these cameras, I wish it had a viewfinder because it is designed for somebody who's getting into the market, you know, somebody who is in that content creation sphere, but because of the price is entering at a lower point and having a viewfinder just would have been a nice bonus, but I get it at the price point. No one else has a viewfinder. You can't really complain about that. The other thing that's missing over here, which again is not the end of the world, is IBIS. There's no yep. in-body stabilization. Now the camera does have a digital vibration reduction, which Nikon refers to as VR, and it crops in a little bit and it's decent enough. It's perfectly good enough. It will also work in conjunction with vibration reduction enabled lenses. So if you have a lens with a optical VR in there, it will work with your digital VR and again, just give you a better stabilized experience and perfectly serviceable at this price point. Perfectly good. Now, in terms of autofocus, we mentioned it has the usual face detection, eye detections for both human and animals. We haven't tested it on animals today, obviously. Yeah, unfortunately. But something to make note of this, mirrorless cameras can always be updated and tweaked with firmware. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, out of the box, when you go to the side profile of a human, I think it kind of loses the face a little bit. Yeah. However, if it's straight bang on, it's pretty decent. But I think that's something Nikon can tweak in future firmware updates. Absolutely, I mean, you get the standard operation here. So you point it at somebody, you get the big yellow square around the face, then it goes eye, and you can switch between the two eyes yeah. with um, the little buttons. Absolutely, perfectly serviceable autofocus. But yeah, as you said, it does lose it sometimes. Sometimes if something moves in front of your face, it loses and it takes a second longer to correct, but not the end of the world. And I mean, by the time you see this video, it's probably already been rectified with a firmware update because that's pretty much how all of these cameras operate these days. Um, and then just general autofocus. Um, so if you're not locking onto a face specifically or anything like that, it's great. It's good standard mirrorless camera yep. autofocus. It locks on, it sticks, it's quick, it's snappy. Use uh, the touchscreen, exactly. tap to focus, the yeah, usual. Absolutely, yeah. and yeah, great autofocus. Um, exactly what you expect from modern mirrorless cameras. Now that we've run through a lot of the features on the Z30, who do you think is gonna buy this? Well, the simple answer is exactly who Nikon aims it at. So definitely aimed at your content creation market, um, a more entry level content creation market. So somebody Maybe. who's just getting into it, specifically in my thinking, moving up from a cell phone. For sure. Yeah, so currently you're recording your video, your photos, all of that on your iPhone, but you now wanna take that next step up. You wanna get that bump in quality, mm. bump in functionality. You wanna learn about all the manual settings and start to really manipulate your footage, your photos, that kind of thing. I really think that's where this little camera is aimed. Definitely more at a video centric market. For sure. If I was buying this and I was coming at content creation more from a stills point of view, and I'm in the Nikon lineup, I would probably consider jumping up to the Z50, yeah. which is essentially the exact same camera, but with a viewfinder on top. In every other aspect where this little camera is aimed for, it slots in perfectly. So you're looking at your standard competition in this lineup right now is essentially the ZV E10 from yeah. Sony. There isn't really anybody else playing over here. And it's so encouraging to see Nikon taking that step and engaging with that market, which is something they have never done before. And it's encouraging. It's encouraging to see what will hopefully be a trend moving forward for Nikon. Um, we often say from other manufacturers that it's great to see sort of tech slipping down, you know, and yes, you have the autofocus and that from much more expensive Nikon cameras in the range, but I'd like to see some of this 
workflow, some of the simplicity, some of the thinking behind this actually work its way up in their lineup and be a little bit more focused on where they're aiming their camera. I think this is a solid little entry for Nikon. That's it for a quick review on the Nikon Z30. Go check it out on the Orms website and we would also like to thank our host Pinar and Son for having us here. A really cool place here in the waterfront. You must definitely come check it out. Yeah, and um, if you are here, their gin's pretty tasty as well. So as per usual, if you enjoy our content, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and comment down below if there's anything you'd like to know. We love hearing from you guys. Until next time, cheers. Bye.